please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi guys, welcome back. This is a fabulous uh, looking market that we have on our screen. In fact, now just getting better. The Sensex is up almost 400 points. So looking much better than the screen yesterday. But let's do one thing. Let's talk about Sterlite technology. It clearly is riding the data boom with a very strong third quarter led by revenue growth. The margins to put up a robust front coming in at a 12 quarter high. Anand Agarwal, the CEO of Sterlite technology joins us now to talk about that. Um, Ananda, thanks so much for joining us on the show. I want to start by talking about your margins. At 22%, this is the best we've seen in a long time. Uh, what led to this and what could be the triggers to sustain these margins in the second half of the year or for the rest of the fiscal? Good morning. Thank you for having me. The margins essentially have been going up uh, on account of uh, very good capacity utilization that we are seeing, especially on the optical fiber business. And that's also combined with the fact that we are selling more uh, newer, higher technology value-added products. Uh, and uh, it's largely a combination of that. Uh, uh, other than that, we have a much higher visibility in terms of our order book. So that creates a better clarity in terms of operating leverage, in terms of the overall supply chain. And that all that adds up to some points in the overall efficiencies and the margins. Okay. Uh, morning, Anand. Uh, you know, the, your numbers uh, have uh, a striking consistency. We are speaking of low base because of demonetization for some sectors. But in your case, the nine month is showing that, uh, you know, this is a, there is a striking consistency. Revenue up 25% for nine months, EBITDA up almost 50% for nine months, and PAT up 60% for the nine month. Uh, what's the sustainable run rate for the next year, see? Uh, morning, Lata. So what we map our business clearly is uh, we keep the data growth as a proxy. We see what's the data growth happening globally, mm. what's the data growth mm. happening in the markets that we deal with, and how that translates into fiber growth, mm. which then translates into the order book, the revenues, the margins for us. And we are seeing consistently that uh, going up. Uh, if uh, At a global level, there is a supply constraint for fiber for uh, 2018 and parts of 2019 as well. So we foresee that uh, this sort of consistency of growth should continue. And that's that's reflected in our order book as well. So right now our order book is at about uh, 4,600 crores mm. uh, on a run rate of about uh, uh, 3,500, 3,600 crores uh, revenue that we are doing. Okay. okay. Uh, so therefore, I mean, I, I, uh, how should we take it? 25% uh, is possible next year because your order book is 25% higher than your uh, uh, revenue run rate? Uh, I believe so. Uh, uh, okay. I mean, if we, look we could at draw the, that conclusion. Uh, we, we could draw that conclusion. Yeah, you're right. Okay. What is the order book? Uh, uh, can you give us a little more details on this 4,600 crore order book? Where are the fresh orders coming in from and what does the order uh, visibility look like? Yeah, about uh, 3,300 crores out of this order book is uh, is the products order book and about 1,300 is the services and software that we do. Mm -hmm. Out of the total, 4,600 crores, uh, almost uh, 3,000 crores is a globe, uh, international order book for us, okay. uh, which, which is largely Europe, uh, largely China, some Latin America and Middle East as well. So margins at 22 is sustainable or can it be bettered? It will be in this range, uh, Lata, because we have four distinct businesses. We have fiber, we have cable, we have services and software, mm. and each have different margin profiles. Okay. So the absolute margin will uh, be going up. Uh, how that fares in percentages will depend on the mix. Fair point. Thank you very much, Anand, for joining with your numbers today and that fairly optimistic commentary that uh, order book is 25% higher than uh, the capacity to produce. So a revenue run rate of 25 and an, uh, a bit of ma a margin uh, at uh, 22 or 23 thereabouts uh, seems sustainable. That's exactly what investors may want to hear. Okay, and let's find out what foreign investors are doing with the Indian markets at record highs. Are we seeing fresh investments pouring in? Yan Den, the head of research at Ashmore Investment Management, joins us now on the phone line to talk about that. Yan, hi, good morning. We speak to you on a momentous day. The market is at a record high. Are you putting more money into markets like India with the Sensex at this 35,000 level?
In general, yes, we are, because we are seeing uh, significant inflows. As you know, we are a specialist emerging market investors, so we're a very good indicator of the appetite, uh, particularly in Europe and the United States, for emerging market assets. And we've just yesterday reported our assets under management, and uh, they went up uh, to $69.5 billion dollars, um, uh, over you know, an increase of about $4 billion over the last quarter. And that's just, you know, net inflows of $3.5 billion. So, you know, quite significant appetite, and it's coming in across uh, both equities and uh, and fixed income. And we expect that these flows are going to continue in the course of 2018. So I think the way uh, what India is going to experience is this comfortable tailwind of inflows coming from from, uh, developed markets because – Valuations are so extended in the European and U.S. bond and equity markets, and valuations on offer and EM are um, are still uh, pretty attractive compared to what's available in developed markets. Okay, yeah, and good morning. So, are valuations the only reason that in, uh, you know the India looks attractive, or are there fundamental reasons as well? Uh, I think I think there are, there is uh, definitely a, a, a sense of um, of confidence among foreign investors in the Indian story. It's true that there have been uh, a few hiccups and difficulties in implementing some of the reforms over the last few years, but uh, many investors, uh, certainly more uh, real money style investors like ourselves, uh, who tend to have um, long-term sticky money to invest, we're certainly willing to look through uh, some of these short-term changes. And we're looking to to seeing the, the the benefits coming through from from uh, the demonetization, the ADA system, the the GST, and and um, and of course uh, the reestablishment of, of credible monetary policy at, at the RBI. All of these factors we think are going to play out uh, over the next um, couple of years. Uh, also, the political outlook seems to be fairly stable, uh, given the recent um, two election victories for Modi in the in the in the re- state elections. In Gujarat and the the other state, I forget forget the name of it, uh, Hichamal. So uh, I think I think pol- politically uh, it looks good. Uh, structurally, it looks good. Cyclically, it, it it has had a little a few challenges lately, but we're not too worried about that. So it's, it, there are definitely sort of stru- underlying structural factors behind this. Point taken. Yandin, pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much. And thank you for taking the trouble to remember Himachal. Himachal <laughs> and the vote there. Yes, sir. but uh, here's a big investor saying that at all time highs, he's still looking to buy. Still looking to buy. In fact, uh, are you still looking to buy intraday though? Ashwini Gujaral, Mitesh Thakkar, and Rajat Bose probably will answer that question. Uh, uh, good morning again. Ashwini going through an intraday dip right now. In fact, the mid cap index is almost in the red. Uh, do you think the the, the story is over for the day, uh, at least intraday, or are you buying this dip? See, what's different is, like I said in the morning, HDFC Bank uh, is going to outperform. So where this news has hit is the private banks. I don't think the other stocks are really uh, focusing on this news or getting uh, moved by global markets. So ICICI Bank, HDFC, HDFC versus Bank, Indusind Bank and Yes Bank, uh, these are the guys I think uh, could still take the Bank Nifty higher because Bank Nifty is outperforming. Uh, all of these uh, banks now have momentum. ICICI Bank for a long time you know, was, uh, didn't really have momentum. Now on dips, uh, buying is coming back. So I would be hopeful that uh, you know, there is follow through and uh, because of expiry, etc., uh, whatever shorts are still left, uh, get covered. So this dip, uh, at least on the bank nifty, should be bought into. Okay, the dip on the bank nifty should be bought into. Mitesh Thakkar and Rajat Bose are also with us. Uh, before that, Ashwini, on individual stocks, uh, anything that uh, catches your eye now? I mean, the mid caps have started to come off quite a bit, but frontliners are still intact. See, HDFC Bank uh, has broken out. It had a couple of uh, quiet days. My sense is it could even close at the highs of the day, so more upside uh, seems likely there. So that's a buy with a stop of 1910, target of 1965. Work hard is a buy with a stop of 968, target of 1000. And uh, UPL is a buy with a stop of 790, target of 825. Okay. Uh, thanks for that, Ashwini. Mitesh, uh, good morning to you yet again. Uh, what would you trade now? Banks? 
So, yes, Lata. In fact, you know, uh, <coughs> the idea of the day was to start with profit booking. We did that and then we looked at stocks which are possibly showing good signs on the intraday chart. And one of them is Kotak Bank. It's not really outperformed in the last few days. So, I'll be comfortable buying into a Kotak Bank. Keep a stop below 1024. Look for targets close to about 1070. And ITC, you know, it's done a lot of base building in this 255 to 65 zone. Now appears to be giving signals of breaking out of that. Mm -hmm. So, that's a buy with a stop below 264. And look for targets of today. Okay, Rajat both also with us. Rajat, good morning. What stocks are you trading? I have three stocks. All are buy calls. First is a mid-cap counter, Repco Home. Uh, it is seeing some follow-on buying after yesterday's kind of bottoming out. I would put a stop below 677 and 693 and 699 are the two targets. And HDFC Bank, though it has... Uh, it has been discussed threadbare, uh, still I also find that it is quite good and 1915 is my stop loss, 1975 and 1998, by tomorrow I expect this level to be scaled up. United Spirit, I hold some shares of this company, that's a disclosure from my side. 3689 three, uh, is my stop loss, 3775, 3794 are the two targets, by tomorrow these targets should be reached. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Rajat Mukesh and Ashwini. Uh, the stock that's racing for the moment is Mine Tree, eight percent higher because of margins coming substantially higher than market expectations. That's the uh, management uh, roster, Ravana. For their uh, or their anchor partner um, for their digital transformation initiatives, um, so continue to maintain our, in our lead and momentum on digital. Uh, digital this quarter grew faster than Mine Tree uh, with about seven percent growth uh, in this quarter. Um, so overall, it has been a great uh, quarter for Mindtree. Now, uh, with that, I'd like to hand over to my colleague Jagan uh, for a few more comments on the financials uh, for this quarter. Thank you, Rosso. Good morning, all. Wish you all a happy new year 2018. Uh, coming to the quarterly update, in Q3, the revenue for Mindtree, fee revenue for Mindtree grew at 3.8%, with the volume decrease of 1.9% and pricing in, uh, in increase of uh, 5.7 percentage. The volume decrease was mainly due to leave hours. Without the uh, leave hours, uh, volume would have improved by 0.6 percentage. The pricing increase was mainly because few projects moved from transition to steady state. Uh, otherwise, the pricing environment is stable at present. The EBITDA for the quarter has uh, gone improved to 15.1 percent compared to 11.6 percent last quarter. The headwinds in this quarter were salary increase of uh, which had an impact of 50 basis points and forex which had an impact of 20 basis points. The tailwind for the quarter were uh, operational improvement of 1.8 uh, percentage, uh, the uh, SGN day leverage was 1.3 percentage, the uh, absence of one-time restructuring costs which had an uh, impact of 90 basis point last quarter and absence of uh, share buyback costs which had an impact of 50 basis points last quarter. The forex uh, loss for the quarter was 1.3 million compared to a forex gain of 1.9 million last quarter. The PAT for the quarter was 10.3 percentage with EPS at 8.61 percentage. Uh, this was around 15 plus percentage of quarter on quarter growth and 40 plus percentage of uh, growth year on year. Uh, the, uh, the ETR for the quarter was 15.2 percentage compared to 24.6% last quarter. This was because of one-time tax provision reversal due to merger of a uh, uh, couple of uh, subsidiary companies with us. The, uh, uh, we have done uh, the cash, uh, cash flow management has been very good this quarter with EBITDA to operating cash flow at 83.2% and EBITDA to free cash flow at 72.6%. Uh, the return on capital employed was uh, stable at 24.6%. The Board of Directors held on 17th January 2018 declared a dividend of 20% which is rupees 2 per share. Okay, that's a positive commentary. A price increase of almost 6% in quarter 3 is what they saw and that led to a good boost as far as the EBITDA performance is concerned.